to a Fox News alert. I'm Brett Baer. House Democrats are throwing down another gauntlet tonight in the increasingly bitter battle over the Mueller report. Their would-be point man for impeachment, Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler, has subpoenaed a key White House insider and a featured player in the special counsel's narrative. Former White House counsel Don McGahn is the subject of that subpoena. We're awaiting response from the Trump team. Chief White House correspondent John Roberts starts us off tonight with that breaking news. Good evening, John. Brad, good evening to you. And we are still awaiting a White House response. It's unknown at this point if the White House will claim executive privilege and keep McGahn from testifying. It's also unclear at this point how much more Congress could learn from McGahn that isn't already known. Remember, uh, the special counsel, Robert Mueller, interviewed McGahn for some 30 hours and found no concrete evidence of any kind of con some uh, criminal obstruction of justice. But this is the latest in a blizzard of subpoenas that's expected to come down off of Capitol Hill that while it may fall short of impeachment, will no doubt continue to tie the White House in knots. At the annual Easter egg roll today, President Trump weighed in on talk of impeachment, taking a what, me worry approach. Are you worried about impeachment, Mr. President? At the moment, the president's confidence would seem to reflect the thinking of the Democratic leadership. In a letter to her colleagues today, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi writing, while our views range from proceeding to investigate the findings of the Mueller report or proceeding directly to impeachment, we all firmly agree that we should proceed down a path of finding the truth. It is also important to know that the facts regarding holding the president accountable can be gained outside of impeachment hearings. The chairman of the committee that would take up impeachment appeared to hesitate when asked about it. Do you think this is impeachable? Yeah, I do. I do think that this, if proven, if proven, uh, which hasn't been proven yet, some of this... Uh, if proven, some of this would be impeachable, yes. But while some 2020 Democratic candidates have stayed away from any talk of impeachment, Senator Elizabeth Warren, perhaps seeking a boost to her lagging campaign, said she's all in. I have called on the House to initiate impeachment proceedings. President Trump mocked such talk in a tweet today firing back, only high crimes and misdemeanors can lead to impeachment. There were no crimes by me, no collusion, no obstruction, so you can't impeach. It was the Democrats that committed the crimes, not your Republican president. The president was also on offense on the financial front today, suing House Oversight Committee Chairman Elijah Cummings for trying to subpoena financial records from the Trump Organization's accounting firm, Mazars USA. In the lawsuit, Trump attorneys attacking the subpoena, writing, its goal is to expose plaintiffs' private financial information for the sake of exposure, with the hope that it will turn up something that Democrats can use as a political tool against the president now and in the 2020 election. Sources say the subpoena goes well beyond requests for the president's financial records, also seeking those of all of his children, including Barron and Tiffany Trump. The lawsuit claims the subpoena was issued because Michael Cohen, a felon who has pleaded guilty to lying to Congress, told the House Oversight Committee that the president had misrepresented his net worth while he was a private citizen. Cummings appeared unfazed by the legal action in a statement this afternoon saying the president has a long history of trying to use baseless lawsuits to attack his adversaries, but there is simply no valid legal basis to interfere with this duly authorized subpoena from Congress. The president's attorneys insist that his finances have long been under the scrutiny of a federal agency, the Internal Revenue Service, that it's the IRS's purview, not Congress's, to look into people's financial records. They also point out that the IRS has looked at President Trump for years upon years and has so found no reason to bring any kind of action, civil or criminal, against the president. Brett? You know, John, Chairman Nadler dropped the subpoena for Don McGahn uh, as House Democrats were meeting on this conference call about next steps after the Mueller report. The White House did not uh, hold back, did not uh, ha issue executive privilege for any of the Mueller report uh, or the testimony of McGahn before. Is there a thought that they may step up again and do that? I mean, we don't know if they're going to exert executive privilege in the case of Don McGahn testifying before Congress, but remember, the entire Mueller investigation was contained under Article 2 of the Constitution, which is the executive branch. So really, it was Don McGahn, a member of the executive branch, talking to another member of the executive branch when it came to the Mueller 
Mueller uh, question it. Uh, but if Congress uh, were to subpoena him, then that's Article One of the Constitution against Article Two of the Constitution. So I assume that the president, under that premise, would be able to uh, exert executive privilege. It, it would be somewhat different. But the, the, the point is that they did not exert executive privilege over the release of the Mueller report. So because they didn't do that, there may be a problem in trying to put the toothpaste back in the tooth, uh, the toothpaste back in the tube now. But in terms of whether it's uh, they didn't exert executive privilege for McGahn talking to Mueller, that's within the administration. This yeah. is different because it's the administration and Congress, two different branches of government. Uncharted waters either way. Uh, John, thank you.